This is the In Focus podcast from the Hindu. Hello and welcome to another episode of the In Focus podcast. I'm your host G Sampath. The results of the National Eligibility Come Entrance Test NEET 2024 have sparked a major controversy. Students and experts have flagged, flagged plenty of irregularities and petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court over the award of grace marks to 1563 students by the National Testing Agency the body that conducts this exam and several other exams as well a concerned supreme court observed that the sanctity of the exam itself had been affected now the nta has informed the court that the grace marks given to the 1563 students would be cancelled and they would have the option to take a retest which would be held on june 23rd however grace marks were not the only issue or irregularity there have been reports of paper leaks there have been reports of torn omr sheets students not getting enough time to finish the exam wrong language uh, of question papers being distributed and so on there so se- several problems have been reported and the most important one of course is that 67 candidates have topped the exam with the maximum possible score of 720 if you look at the previous history there have only been ca- the maximum number of students which who have topped with 720 out of 720 was only 3 this year it's 67 so it is a huge uh, irregularity as well so uh, even if we set aside neat 2024 as an aberration there have been systemic problems with the exam itself as a mode of selection for instance the justice ak rajan committee set up by the tamil nadu government to study the impact of neat had said in its report that neat was anti poor anti social justice and favored students from affluent families So in this episode we will look at what are the various problems with NEET 2024 in particular and also NEET in general and we will look at how to ensure accountability in the functioning of NTA and why are states like Tamil Nadu seeking an exemption from NEET and we have with us professor Anita Rampal former dean faculty of education Delhi University and Dr G R Ravindranath general secretary of the doctors association for social equality He was also a member of the Justice A.K. Rajan Committee. Uh, Professor Rampal, Dr. Ravindranath, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to InFocus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, to start with, uh, I was wondering, uh, uh, Professor Rampal, if you can give us a quick overview and later on, uh, Dr. Ravindranath can also add on, an uh, overview of the irregularities in NEET 2024 in particular. and if the nts respond which is to give an option of retest to only a select number of students not to everybody is that an adequate resolution of this entire controversy yes uh, thanks sampath actually this is such a major issue and it has been festering you know this has suddenly come out in a very big big way but uh, we have been seeing how these issues have come even in some of the earlier tests conducted by nta so uh, certainly th- there have been many irregularities and uh, they've come out very gradually when people have revealed certain uh, aspects of what has been noticed so and this was not and it's a completely opaque manner in which nta has conducted it and also the way in which it tried to review it i mean that again was questionable they set up their own committee and uh, with you know no one from outside reviewing it they set up their committee and then even today i mean this morning when things are in the supreme court and supreme court was hearing some petitions they uh, their lawyer seems to claim that it's resolved now because they have told these 1563 students that you know they won't be given grace marks so they are trying their best to push things under the carpet not to reveal things not to make it a reliable transparent scenario which people can then repose their trust in and that's why you can see that young people are all the more agitated because they can see that things are being hidden and not revealed properly and coming out only when they question for instance you know when students questioned that you can no one can ever get a mark like 719 out of 720 uh you know they only after that did they say that grace marks have been given 
because the uh, multiples are each question has four marks and then if they do it wrong it's a minus one so someone can get 716 if you got all but one that is out of 180 you've done 179 correct but then uh, you can't get uh, a 719 you know you can't get these these kind of computations you can't get these combinations of marks so students were the ones and their coaching centers who raised they will raise these questions and after that they actually claim that oh well sorry these uh, you know these sort of marks which seem skewed and which seems er er erratic are actually because we gave grace marks now even the formula for given even grace marks is totally is illegal because they say they have taken the 2018 judgment of a uh, Supreme Court for the CLAT examination, which was an online examination, and where the question was the loss of time because of technicalities, and the time can be measured because it's logged in. Everything is online and it's logged in. But that judgment, now that I have seen it, it clearly says that this judgment cannot be used as a precedent for the entrance exams of engineering and medicine. So that the Supreme Court judgment says that, and they use that judgment in the most questionable, problematic, and ad hoc way to give some marks, and no one knows what marks they gave, how they calculated the time of the lost time, and then you know what. So it is it's completely something that is not trustworthy. It's completely something that is irregular and even illegal. And so uh, that's why it's raised this huge furor and students' anxiety. I mean, it's, you know, it's, you can imagine what happened. There's students who are speaking, a couple of them who come and speak and say, this is the third year or they took a year off. They've been studying and preparing for this. Families are invested. Family savings are invested in these things. And we know Students can see that in the first 100 marks, that's another major irregularity that we can see in terms of the distribution of marks. In the top 100 marks, the number of students who have come in now is like, uh, you know, many times over whatever ever has happened before. So uh, uh, someone who's maybe just 100 marks or 70 marks below the top full, uh, uh, you know, the top mark that is possible and uh, 67 getting that is not possible, should not be possible in a regular, well-distributed question uh, paper. But there are almost 50,000 or something, you know, yesterday we were hearing some people telling us all the figures, showing it on TV. So people have been questioning every aspect of this test and the way the results have been announced, announced for 10 days earlier on the elections day is again something which has raised suspicion. Why should something come out on elections day when you have actually declared a date which is 14th June and you're doing it on a day when the whole media you think and everyone's going to be busy and distracted by looking at the elections results. So everything that is coming out and coming out because of other people are noticing, not because that is being revealed or being accepted and being uh, you know, placed before the public, uh, that leads us to think that there's something extremely irregular about this. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Rampal, for this uh, broad overview of all the things that are that are quite uh, mind-bogglingly disturbing uh, with this year's conduct of uh, the NEET exam. Especially what you said about you know the very formula for applic for giving grace marks is actually uh, not applicable at all. I mean, I don't know if if it is a wrongful interpretation of the Supreme Court judgment. How did the Supreme Court itself let it pass? Yes, it's not wrongful. Yesterday, someone showed us the judgment and it clearly says this is not applicable for medicine or engineering uh, exams. So, uh, you know, I mean, so I'm just saying that uh, the way it has been done has raises doubts and raises all kinds of suspicions about malafide intentions. And uh, that is what is more serious. And and also, uh, I mean, we'll come to this later because I think the uh, Dr. Ravinath is here. And I really think that the Tamil Nadu uh, report that came out, this committee came out, brought out some very important things. We can talk about that later. But making a such a highly contested examination solely dependent on one 
on multiple choice questions of this kind, I had a look at some sample questions. I mean, they're really very ordinary routine kind of, you know, questions that are asked for in these exams, multiple choice exams. You just cannot know whether a student has understood anything or not, uh, has grilled through certain formulae and sort of is familiar with certain answers and things like that. So what are we doing? I mean, be it, these are lakhs of people and these are lifetimes which are involved in this. So the whole thing about this is not just this time, but it's the fact that this NEET has been running since 2018, I think. I think Dr. Ravindranath can uh, tell us. The last six years or seven years, and it has now come to a point, it's at its nadir, at the lowest point, and it tells us that this exam is not uh, uh, something that we can trust, and the agency, and we'll come to that later, the agency is not one we can trust. Right, NEET is at its nadir, and this agency is something uh, we really uh, are losing trust in. Dr. Ravi, please uh, do share your initial uh, preliminary uh, thoughts on this entire controversy. Yes, it is a very big uh, problem, sir. It is a very big scam. Every year, some form of scam is taking place need the entrance examination. So that uh, in the uh, NTA is losing the people's belief and the trust. So the NTA should act transparent in a transparent way. The office, officials should be uh, condemned. They should be transferred. And the genuine officials should be appointed in NTA. NTA is a central government organization. So central government uh, uh, can have do a lot of things. So. Uh, regarding this uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, regarding Tamil Nadu, because of this uh, highly uh, uh, irregularities taking place in uh, need examination uh, and other problems, uh, we are demanding exemption for need from Tamil Nadu state government controlled medical seats for UG, PG as well as super specialty. This, this need is against social justice, against the rural people, against first gen generation students, and against Tamil Indian students, and it is also against women students, girls, as well as it is against um, uh, students coming from um, low, uh, low have caste as well as uh, very, very poor students. That's why we are demanding it is against social justice also. So central government should consider the state, Tamil Nadu state government, uh, the state assembly's um, a bill uh, regarding to get uh, exemption from need for the Tamil Nadu state government control states. Moreover, in previous, in, in earlier also, before need also, the All India Pre-Medical Pre-Dental uh, Test in 2015, large scale, uh, large scale uh, scam has taken place. So the, it is. It shows that the NTA and central government they are not having any uh, effective manner or uh, efficiency to conduct their um, a very big uh, entrance examination across India. If they give a uh, neat examination for the states which are all willing to have exemption, then the number will reduce. Instead of 23 lakh people, this number will be reduced to uh, 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs like that because the state government control states will be filled by the state governments plus two on the basis of plus two examination or. or they can conduct separate entrance examination. They can commit plus two marks as well as the entrance examination marks. So the, 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 the central government should understand the seriousness of this problem. Right. So, so why do you uh, uh, believe that the way forward should be uh, for Tamil Nadu seeking an exemption? Shouldn't uh, all the states also uh, be exempted? As in, shouldn't the entire country be exempt from... Uh, from NEET itself and go back to uh, whatever was the case earlier, AICTE was conducting these exams, uh, I know there was other uh, universities which were conducting exams, so we had a system which was working and the working system was sought to be replaced by this new centralized uh, system. So uh, is there any reason why we should continue with uh, NEET according to you? For the central government say, uh, controlled medical seats for UG, PG, super specialty, there must be an entrance examination, whether it may be in the name of NEET or CET or any other name. For the state government controlled seats, and the state should decide in which manner they have to fill the uh, uh, seats uh, as well as admission process. That is the that is good for the uh, state's rights as well as for federal, federal system of India. So that only we are demanding that. Moreover, the, when the NEET was int introduced in, in our country, Many state chief ministers they opposed. Even our uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, when he was the chief minister of Gujarat, he strongly opposed NEET. This NEET will be against the Gujarati students. I will not allow the uh, NEET entrance examination inside uh, my state. See, he told like that. Likewise, Orissa, West Bengal, Kerala, as well as various states, they opposed NEET entrance, entrance examination when it was introduced. But during that uh, period, Rather, um, before introducing uh, NEET also, some problems were there. 
we cannot deny that we should not deny that we are living in a, in a capitalist what society what kind of problems were there sir before neat was introduced i mean as in where those problems which neat could address is that that's what i'm interested in uh, we we need to address the problem of uh, uh, to control the private medical as well as the teamed universities sir now package system is not there in private uh, medical universities before that private medical universities they will collect large amount of moment, um, um, amount uh, almost 3 crores after getting that they will admit the students for mbbs after that they will finish md or uh, 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 super specialty also continuously this is called package system now package system is not prevailing in any other st- any state any uh, deemed university because of the need uh, and uh, we can say that uh, even in the today in our capital system even uh, after eliminating entrance examination tamil nadu the government school students they didn't get adequate admissions in medical college sir that is very very important so during the elimination of entrance examination tamil nadu only 1% of students joined in government medical government school students joined government medical colleges after neat it became it fall to 0.1% sir so what i want to say is whether there is need or not whether there is entrance examination or not in this present day socio economic system poor students are not getting equal opportunity in any field any examination that, that is very much in, important so for that tamil nadu government has now um, started to uh, started to give uh, 7.5% reservation for the government school students in uh, medical uh, admissions it has uh, uh, given hope for the students it has helped a lot uh, last year more than 550 students from government medical um, government schools they joined in medical seats in, uh, in mbbs as well as bds courses even in private medical they are uh, they are given 7.5 percent reservation for the sound for the students join in 7.5 percent quota government is giving tuition fees education fees hostel fees as well as counseling fees so they are start studying freely in um, um, government medical colleges as well as in uh, private medical colleges that is helping the uh, poor students of the uh, tamil nadu so that only we are demanding like a reservation in all india level also that will be helpful for the students every chief minister they are still telling that need is against poor but abolishing need or getting exemptions from need will not solve all the problems we have to understand that uh, exemption for from the need is necessary that is a must but at the same time it will not solve the all the all problems of uh, poor students as well as medical admission problems prevailing medical admissions that is very very important and that is why i am saying some form of uh, reservation should be included in and that is called compartment reservation or inner reservation among the uh, reservation category that is in tamil nadu we are having 69% reservation uh, for uh, tamil nadu oppressed community people for sc st obc uh, mbc like that inside the 69% reservation there should be uh, a inner inner reservation for poor students whose families income is less than uh, 2 lakh per annum that will solve the problem that will help uh, help the students from uh, very very poor background and socially educationally backward uh, students also right right thank you for that uh, dr ravi uh, so uh, professor rambal i was just wondering so dr ravi has explained uh, fairly clearly that there are uh, many of course procedural and you know uh, other transparency issues with nta's way of conducting need but then he says that you know uh, there are other problems which are independent of uh, nta and need which is to do with you know uh, the, the, the entire bias against poorer students marginalized students which was there earlier before need and it is there after need as well so uh, what are your thoughts on this it is aggravated after need it is this inequality is aggravated after need i just want to clarify a sampath that it is not a question of aggravating by need any centralized large scale multiple choice you know this kind of a shallow uh, uh, way of assessment will is highly contested it becomes high stakes and any high stakes and this is this is something we find in education anywhere in the world that any such large centralized uh, kind of a test which has nothing to do with where you come from your own socio economic conditions your understanding of the world this only tests social advantage it does not test your understanding because it only you know people invest in this people who have the um, a privilege who have money resources coaching they invest in this and that is what gets people into it 
It's not their deep understanding of any subject, any discipline. And so these are something that in education, why is it do you think that our Right to Education Act, it's an act which said that don't take a centralized board exam for children, don't take an exam until the end of class eight because they have a right to education from six to 14. So they said you take your decentralized exams, you take your school exams, but any large board centralized exams is actually disadvantages the already disadvantaged. It just pushes them out. It privileges only those who have social advantage. So I think that is what we must understand. And that's why, and also the federal structure. And I think I, I really like the way this Tamil Nadu uh, committee has written its report because it's taken the history of many countries, what other countries are doing, even American universities. In, in 2021, they said, most of the universities said, we are not going to use these measures which of the kind of tests that they were taking earlier. And they said, even if we do, we'll do it very cautiously and we'll do it as one measure, but we'll look at many other measures before we select students. So I think that we have a wealth of data and understanding a lot of debates in education about the nature of these tests. So, uh, and, and the federal structure in our country is very crucial because the state should know best, like uh, Tamil Nadu says, and like Dr. Uh, Ramadanath said, that uh, people from rural Tamil Nadu, where you want them to be taking up jobs as doctors and helping in working with the public health system, will not even come through the exam. Where will you get people as doctors for your entire state who understand the state and who understand the people whom they're going to help with in terms of their public health? So I think that it is very crucial. I hope that many of us read this report. I'm going to share it amongst many people who work in education. But I think that Tamil Nadu should now take the lead. It should not only uh, been been uh, talking about, you know, saying that it should be Tamil Nadu exemption. It should take a lead in terms of what a national assessment should and should not be. And we don't think we want these. I mean, you know, even CUET, which is only for the, which came in saying it's only for the central universities, for our universities, for the undergraduate courses is very damaging. And we do, we have opposed it. All uh, sort of academics, teachers have opposed this kind of testing. We know what problems come in. And again, uh, people uh, have to resort to coaching. So, it devalues what you've studied. It devalues your school education because now no one is bothered. I know schools which, uh, uh, you know, which are charging money so that you don't attend school and you go and do the coaching for the entrance test. So uh, we don't want to be devaluing genuine learning, which is not competitive. Genuine learning should never be competitive. My school leaving exam should never be competitive. It should just tell me how well I have learned, how well I have participated. But today in our country, the entire thing is, is so sort of derailed because even the board exam becomes competitive and uh, uh, we don't know what learning is really all about. So I think that this move of how should states do selections, which are not sorting and throwing out people and excluding people, but which are really getting people's, uh, you know, people who want to work in this, giving them support, like you said, giving them fellowship, giving them help, giving them support, but giving them these opportunities to choose certain areas in which they work and they contribute further. Uh, I think that is something which the state should do. We should be working with them as educationists. But I think Tamil Nadu should really take the lead and say that we should ban this form of meat. We should ban, we should question and review what a national testing agency is doing, doing these, because as I said, many other tests that they are taking, even for CUET or JEE are questionable. My own colleagues, people who, wait, who go there to make questions or moderate questions are quite aghast by what happens inside that body. And so academically, it's, it's totally, it's not equipped. So why should such a body control the entire country and children's lives and their futures? That is something which has to be questioned. And we don't want a centralized high stakes test for anyone. So how should states look at it? States should be working separately, but I'm just saying because Tamil Nadu is one state which is doing it along with the other measures.
as you pointed out, supporting students, giving some reservations, giving fellowships, maybe helping them in even understanding and developing, you know, those who want to go in certain areas, helping them in how you get entrance and how you find that avenue to work in further. And it's really public service that you're working it. This is not a market as a, this is not a package that you're talking about. And this is, you know, as people say, my salary package and my I've cracked the exam. It's such a terrible word to use for any exam. <laughs> you cracked an exam. So we have to change the ethos of what assessment and examinations and even entrances. We know entrance has to be selective. We know entrance, you have fewer seats and more people, but it cannot be in the manner that it is being done right now. This is quite meaningless. It even borders on the illegal. And uh, I think that that should, I, I'm looking at uh, Tamil Nadu to also help us take this in a larger way. Right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Professor Ampal. I mean, coming back to uh, this particular year's uh, need, I mean, what you've said is it's a fairly comprehensive critique of this entire need uh, structure as such. But coming to specifically to this uh, year's examination, because that is a peg for this entire uh, discussion, uh, is, 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 is the retesting option being given to 1,500 odd students? Is that a fair resolution? I mean, shouldn't the entire test itself be scrapped and, and, and have a one more uh, fresh test itself? Would there, wouldn't that be a more fair way to do it? Yes, that would be fair and that would give the it will show that you are being fair you know to be seen as being fair is important uh, legally so it will show that yes you are starting from you know you're being fair because today no one knows how this number 1563 came no one knows that we don't know you know what was the formula how did you decide what time i mean it's so arbitrary that it's liable to be questioned and it's liable again to be privileging only some people not the others uh, so i think this doesn't make sense to me as an academic, as someone who, who works in education. This is not fair. This is not a resolution. I think this needs to be scrapped. And I think, uh, you know, we need Supreme Court should look at it now. The Supreme Court should set up a committee. One, of course, do an inquiry and an investigation into what happened here, the malpractices and the irregularities, but also in terms of, uh, you know, how this this thing, this particular year should be dealt with. Uh, and then after that, I think we have more time for uh, states and others to come up with their own uh, suggestions. Right. Dr. Ravi, you want to add your thoughts on what would be the best outcome forward for this particular year's exams, which we have seen like major controversies have dogged it. Fair inquiry should be made, sir, uh, monitored by the Supreme Court uh, uh, judges. An inquiry monitored by the Supreme Court is what you are suggesting. Because how much uh, scam has taken place? We don't know, sir. Are you convinced, sir? That, are you convinced that there is a scam which has taken place, or you are? This is a scam. Regarding this uh, grace marks, that is a scam. Now they have scrapped it. They have abolished the grace marks. They have withdrawn that. So after that, they are telling that uh, the previous marks will be their original marks. Otherwise, they can write another examination. That marks will be taken. So th that's all. Now, what I want to say, the extent, the extent in which the grace marks were given, that, that, that should be uh, found out. That is very, very important. Only 1,500 students benefited and more students benefited. That is very, very important. That's why I want uh, I want a uh, fair inquiry into the problem. If the only 1,500, we can conduct the examination for them. And the rest of the students, it is not necessary because it is a very big uh, issue. More than 23 lakhs, they have to, students, they have to write the exam, transfer problem, IG, everything. Right. So, so one key uh, factor here is that we don't know how this 1,563 number came into existence. It is just like one entity saying these are the number of students who got grace marks. NTA, NTA is saying like that. How can we believe that? So that only I, I am de demanding that. Yes. More yes. in the 2015, the com completely uh, uh, pre-medical, pre-dental test was um, uh, uh, scrapped and a new exam was conducted at that time. So the scam was very big scam at that time. Now, there is uh, the scam has taken place. We cannot know that we should not, we are not knowing the extent of the scam. That's why we, we uh, I am demanding to have a fair inquiry marked by the Supreme Court judges. But we also know that there are so many arrests made. There are 13 to 15 people arrested. There were FIRs of paper leaks. Yes, it's paper leaks is there, madam. Paper leaks are, are, yes, students have said that they've seen the papers. That's also, 
obviously the sanctity as as supreme court says is that we have to know the extent uh, uh, how much it was distributed how much students have uh, benefited for the, from the from that we have to assess that uh, just just uh, uh, i know that but if uh, there is a paper leak then uh, you know uh, from what we know in terms of what students have said uh, that then you can't the supreme court has said that the sanctity is under question you know it's compromised so when you say that an exam uh, sanctity has been compromised how can you then allow everyone to trust it if you just say i take away these grace marks madam it is a very big problem madam because if the the, the question papers leak uh, leak was there across india we can say something but it has happened one center in bihar so that too they are saying after the examination the question paper appeared in the uh, social medias so we have to assess that for that only i am demanding supreme court judges monitored inquiry after knowing that we can uh, demand complete uh, uh, scrapping of the uh, exam, abolition examination uh, of this year and we can conduct fresh examination for the 23 lakh students yes and people are, people are saying that you if you do a quick statistical analysis also you get some sense you get some patterns you know if you see like if you see that uh at some place suddenly this person in the school marks has you know not done well at all and here suddenly this person is getting 100 out of 100 or 720 out of at least you you can red flag certain areas you can red flag a, a certain cluster of patterns which you need to look at more carefully and that can be done that that girl i think that that, that candidate they should have might have neglected the plus 2 syllabus plus 2 examination they might have concentrated on the entrance examination only they might have gone to the coaching centers that, that i think uh, that, that that will be a problem for that no but you don't fail you don't fail in an exam there is a student who has failed in class 12 and then done extremely well in almost topping here so i'm saying these kind of patterns are not la- likely to happen i'm just saying that when an investigation is done you should look at these correlations also yes, at least yes, that, see- that is true madam that is do I, i i agree proper investigation should be made in that case also but we have to know the ex- uh, 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 the problem across india to assess the extension matter right, right. That, that, i that, i get your point uh, dr ravi uh, th- thank you so much yes. i think uh, we are running out of time i mean one to i mean just a quick summing up number one i mean there is a lot of evidence and uh, you know patterns in terms of markings and performances which indicate that there is some kind of a scam or fraud which has happened Uh, which is sort of this suspicion is further aggravated by the lack of transparency uh, proactive disclosures from the nta so i think uh, two things are very clear one there should be an independent probe either monitored by the supreme court is what both of you uh, panelists are suggesting and number two this entire uh, exam needs to be scrapped and there should be a retest which would be the most fair uh, outcome for all the aspirants 23 uh, more than 23 lakh students and thirdly i think there needs to be a relook at this entire centralized mode of examination and, uh, and in particular the mode of functioning of nta and probably uh, professor rampal would say that uh, tamil nadu should take the lead in this given that they have done such a great job uh, with this uh, justice rajan committee report as well i think these are the broad points uh, which have come up if either of you want to add any uh, maybe quick points just one thing that it is important that we don't fall back only on multiple choice questions it doesn't test it doesn't uh, assess children's learning and also that universities and states and colleges should have a role in this we shouldn't give it to the market because right now the questions are just what come for a upsc exam or some other exam uh, government service exam so students who are preparing for that then come into even in our university we are getting only those students in whatever subject they get ad- admission they come in we don't want these kind of exams to be the uh, main benchmark for assessing students in any specialized areas people who teach work work with students they should have a say and that's what uh, in iits at least they try to do that but i think we should uh, really underline that you cannot give it to the market to just make some kind of a test which it does for every other uh, domain right multiple choice questions are the most market friendly mode of assessment and i think that's not really ideal from the point of view of education itself thank you for that uh, point uh, professor rampal dr ravi quickly your final right. thought yes yes competitive examinations inevitable in this present day society jobs are very less uh, higher education opportunities are very less but competitors are more 
for that we need a entrance examination uh, for uh, regarding the centralized examination we must have a centralized entrance examination for the central government seats all india medical uh, aims jipmer all india quota for the deemed university as well as for the defense medical college that is inevitable or even for job jobs we need competitive examination because the, the job opportunity is very less the competitors are more candidates are more for for 6500 posts for group 4 in tamil nadu more than 20 lakh students 20 lakh candidates applied how can we give the job to them without conducting a competitive examination a competitive examination for for job it is called competitive examination for education it is called entrance examination there is no difference in, in uh, multiple choice questions the pattern is same so in this present day it is inevitable we must have entrance examination for higher education for the state, central government regarding the state they can decide for aims we cannot admit students on the basis of plus 2 marks regarding jipmer we cannot admit students on the basis of plus 2 marks that is very all state students they can apply we cannot take plus 2 marks because in every state syllabus is different standards are different marks yeah, are yeah, different yeah. so centralized examination yeah yeah we we see your point sir you need we were saying we need the competitive exams for jobs and entrance exams for higher education because of the ex extremely high demand and limited number of seats slash jobs but these are not the same thing jobs are different from education we must i underline this let's not uh, examination is different competitive examination is different, no. examination is different. No. regarding this qualification exam is accepted with dr dr uh, uh, madam anita rampal regarding qualification examination i accept regarding this competitive examination we, it is inevitable in this present day society very competitive world we need entrance examination sir please look at anywhere in the world even the admissions into any yeah, university more number of colleges madam more number of seats more number of colleges competitive examination different qualifying examination different regarding qualification examination i accept um, professor anita rampal's uh, views regarding the com uh, for the competitive examination it is inevitable in this society now because we are having inadequate colleges inadequate medical seats but aspiring candidates are very, uh, more the demands are more that's why we are need of entrance examination for the state government control seats they can decide according to their own uh, need they can conduct first uh, the entrance examination separately otherwise they can admit students on the basis of plus 2 marks regarding this all india level for aims jipmer all india quota deemed universities there must be entrance examination sir otherwise in the deemed university Uh, they will go for any any kind of um, mal practices they sim simply admit students after getting lot of money already i have told the about the package system it should be it should not be acceptable moreover poor students should also study in private medical college deemed universities for that the government should uh, pay the uh, fees as well as everything for the poor students in deemed universities uh, who are all joining deemed universities as well as private medical colleges more fee uh, fees should be fixed in, in a fair manner and a loan should be given any without any in, uh, without any interest uh, with, uh, without any hindrance also regarding the uh, regarding the fee structure national medical commission should bring some am amendments already they have uh, stated that only for 50% of seats we can fix fees uh, seats another fee 50% uh, they, they can uh, fix seats according to the state governments medical colleges in, in every state now this uh, uh, private medical deemed university they have approached the supreme court that we will not give the fee structure of uh, the government medical colleges to the uh, candidates getting appointed in uh, private medical colleges as deemed universities so now the 100% of the seats uh, fees were fixed by the private medical colleges deemed universities it is not uh, fair for the students so the national medical commission should bring some amendment 100% of seats fees should be fixed by the state government as well as central government for the private medical colleges and the deemed universities are also people are not speaking about deemed universities not speaking about private medical college not speaking about capitation fees that is a very big problem sir so everything should be looked after because we are living in a capitalist society the medical education is a socio economic problem we have to understand we have to see that in a holistic manner right thank you so much sir i think there will be some divergence of views uh, with professor rampal that is fine i think you are basically coming from a perspective of uh, uh, the high fees of private medical universities and the kind of uh, distortion these high fees are having on the entire system especially the poorer students and you know the, the national medical council aspect where they have gone to the supreme court and said 
uh, now state government earlier they used to fix the cap the fees for 50% of the seats now they can't do it at all 100% the private universities are going to decide i think that is a concern you are uh, you are coming from that is uh, taken the very important board. sir yeah 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 we will take note of that as well yeah thank you so much uh, for bringing those aspects into this neat uh, debate uh, sir Uh, no, Professor Rampal, uh, your uh, final thoughts. I mean, you were you were interrupted last time. Please go ahead and uh, do share them. Yeah, I I say that I certainly I also agree that there has to be a capping. I agree that the market cannot rule education the way it is right now. But I want to say that we must keep this in mind. I mean, just saying that you know, reiterating the fact that because there are fewer seats, that's why competitive exams have to be there. is one question but uh, everything is competitive similarly with jobs you know how many lakhs are applying for such few jobs and over qualified people are applying so that is the situation that we have to contend with but we cannot legitimize what is happening today in the name of competitive exams uh, we should see that whenever an exam becomes thrown into the market like any of these entrance exams have been done then something like quota which has become symbolic of a criminal it's a criminal environment within which we are throwing young students students who are you know uh, probably should be in school doing things finishing their ex- school and learning something we throw them in a it's it's criminal on our part all of us society who says that this is fine exam should be competitive because the market now is pushing into areas where people are mortgaging their own lives and their savings because they're telling them that they will get admitted if they come here we will make sure that they get Get admitted into uh, engineering or medicine, and we know that this cannot happen. We know that the probability of admission is so small that every person, especially when her or his school education has not provided them with that ability, with the understanding, with the depth to be able to deal with certain subjects, they will not get admission. But year after year, and they cannot tell their parents that they are investing money into uh, someone who is going to be a loser. so you know this is criminal if society thinks that this is it's fine it's this is this can carry on that's why i'm saying that the nature of these selections has to be changed this is for education and education is a public good and if even if there are private universities and private colleges how does that entrance have to be done many of the private universities today are not going through these kind of uh, uh, they're not using these measures as the only sole measure even in india so they look at other things they talk they they uh, they do it screening and they screen it in various layers and the last kind of screening they do is when it's a personal uh one on one with the student so we have to do all these kinds of things just because we have large numbers we cannot make it into a criminal into an illegal system of throwing students in the in the under the sharks of what the market can be and then saying that this is all very fine we can't do anything with the government has to regulate some things has to make sure that these kinds of coaching uh, uh, prisons that are uh, existing why are they existing there and the government must make sure that whatever possibilities there are people get a fair chance and these kind of tests do not give anyone a fair chance right uh, it was a very powerful point sir uh, professor rampal i think you mentioned quota and how uh, criminal the entire enterprise is but in the context of need i think it should be uh, mentioned that neet has given a tremendous uh, boost to quote and quote the coaching center mafias i mean it's basically a uh, tailor made structure for coaching centers which get a lot more uh, sort of a demand is lima demand for them because of the very nature of the entrance examination process and i think this is something which needs to be kept in the mix when we think about the whole uh, neat way of selecting and uh, you know going ahead with you know our future doctors and medical practitioners so on thank you so much uh, Uh, Dr. Ravindranath, thank you so much, Professor Rampal. It has been a very uh, engaging, illuminating debate. I hope uh, there will be a proper investigation into this year's examination and a proper reassessment of whether India's children, India's medical aspirants, is this what uh, they need to go through if they want to become doctors and medical practitioners? Thank you so much. Pleasure talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam. In Focus will be back soon. with analysis of the biggest news issues.
In the meantime, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher and other platforms. Just search for In Focus by The Hindu. We'll see you soon.